because we're going to be having a word problem quiz so on the, the last page of practice test one, it says number three, solve. Be sure to label your answer. And there are two word problems. Everybody see them? Now, we basically have two kinds of word problems that we are responsible for. One is like problem A, which is called a mixture problem. And what is our standard general format for those kinds of problems? Amount times percent plus amount times percent equals amount times percent. Nathaniel, is that thing running? Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's go through. This is the practice test. This looks exactly like your test. And looks exactly like the quiz we're going to have tomorrow. Okay? Two problems. So here we go. Can we turn the whole way through it too? Yes. So now, how much 9% solution? So we're going to put an 09 right here, right? Is going to be added to a 3% solution to get a 5% solution. Is everybody okay with those numbers? How much 9% solution? Everybody okay with an X right there? must be mixed with a 3% solution to get 15 gallons of a 5% solution. This one is tricky. I don't know how much of this I have either, do I? No. But what do I know about these two numbers? They have to add up to 15. So if this one's X, won't this one be 15 minus X? Yes. Because they have to add up to 15. Erica. Does this make a difference if you write X minus X? Yes, that would make a huge difference. Erica, I want you to think about this for a minute. Let's say we had I mean, two numbers that add up to 15. So maybe 5 and 10? and they add up to 15, right? So if I knew that I had five gallons of this, would I take five minus 15, or would I take 15 minus five? Because this is not right here. 15 minus five. It's gotta be the, it's gotta be the total minus whatever you've already added. So 0.09x plus, okay, now I'm gonna use my calculator. Point four five minus point oh three x equals point seven five. What's point oh nine minus point oh three? Point oh six. label your answer, so that would be five what? Five gallons. So one kind of problem that you're responsible for, and we actually have already had that on the test earlier. <coughs> is the mixture problem. The other kind of problem is where you have a job to do and people can either do it alone or together. <laughs> well, 
general format for problems where we can do the job alone or we can do the job with each other. One over time alone plus one over time alone equals one over time together, right? So now we're doing problem B. Will and Zane can paint a fence together in 12 hours. Where does the 12 go? Uh, together. 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 It takes Will 15 hours alone. How long does it take Zane? What do you think about that equation? Does that seem okay to everybody? All the numbers and all the spots make sense. All right, what do you do from here? It's divisible by 180. It's divisible by 180. Moses says, I'm going to multiply everything by 180x. Now, how did Moses get 180? 15 times 12. Could he have used a different number? Yes. But if it's easier for you just to do 15 times 12 and use 180, that will work every time. So here we go. 15 goes in here 12 times, so that's 12x plus 180. 12 goes into there 15 times, that's 15x. What, Erica? 180. So 180 equals 3x, and how long does it take Zane by himself? 60, 60 hours. Problem number two. Is there a question on your test like problem number two? Yes. Is there a question on tomorrow's quiz like problem number two? Yes. So let's get it under control. Here we go. Number two. How much 19% solution must be mixed with a 30% to get 18 gallons of a 25%. Now, first of all, make sure you're okay with everything I put in there so far. How much 
is going to be mixed with 30% to get 18 gallons of 25. I'm missing something, aren't I? What am I missing? <coughs> I need this amount right here, don't I? I don't have any idea what that is, do you? But what do I know? I know that these, these two added up have to give me 18. So this has to be whatever 18 minus this is. If these two add up to 18, then whatever that is, this has to be 18 minus it. So if that's 6, this will be 12, right? Because it got to add up to 18. So now I'll do my distributive and all that stuff. Okay, so just using my calculator to help me out. Anybody else have a question about one of the problems on the homework worksheet? Do we need to do another uh, Like number five, Dylan can bake a cake in two hours. DeAndre can do it in three hours. How long will it take them to do it together? What would that look like? This is number five. Dylan can make it in two hours. DeAndre can do it in three hours. How long would it take them together? This time, what will we multiply by? 6x. 6x? Do we need to have an x in there? Yes. yes because you've got an x here, right? Right. So, 3x plus 2x. Mrs. Ford, please excuse this interruption. Can I please check your office? Yep. Thank you. So 5x equals 6, and x equals 6 fifths, and I have to put a unit on it. What would be that unit? Six hours. Hours. <coughs> so a little bit more than one hour. One will use this formula, and one will use this formula. Would you use like the group thing? No, it's not a group thing. Okay, let's go back to our practice test then. And we have done the last page. So all we have to do now is decide what we want to do next. So take a look at it. You want to just do the front page? Start with number one, or do you want to skip around? What do you want to do? Number one. Number one. Okay. So the very first problem on the test is this big gigantic thing with asymptotes and all that. Do you remember we had a quiz over this? And it looked just like this, actually. All right, who remembers how we start? Factor. So how does my top factor? Mm -hmm. 
minus 3 plus 2. I heard somebody say it. How about the bottom? Beautiful. What do you notice? We have a hole. Our problem reduces to this, which means we have a hole. Where? Where will that hole be? Where x is negative 2. Right? Look, kids, make sure that's clicking with you. You have a hole at negative 2. How do you find the y part of the hole? Put it right here. So if I put in negative 2, I would get negative 5 over negative 4, which is 5 fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. Negative 2, 5 fourths. There it is. Five fourths is a little bit more than one. So that's why it's where it is. All right. Well, there's a whole list of stuff there. What else do you want to put in this picture? That's called a vertical asymptote, Ashley. And where do we want to put it? We want to put a vertical asymptote where x equals 2. If you have forgotten, make a little note on the paper. Where do vertical asymptotes come from? What makes the denominator zero? All right, what else do you want to put in your picture? A horizontal asymptote. And where do you want to put that, Julian? At one. At one. Again, if you have forgotten, make a note on the paper. You have to know this. The horizontal asymptote comes from right here. X over X. All right, now what? We need our intercepts. And our intercepts are points where either X is zero or Y is zero. Those are the intercepts. So we'll just go to our equation, and maybe we'll let x be 0. What do you get if you let x be 0? 3 halves. So I'll plot that point. It's right here. Where did I plot that point? On the y-axis? So this is your y-intercept. You can't get them mixed up, kids, if you're paying attention. If you put it on the y-axis, it's the y-intercept. Now I'm going to let y be 0. So I'm going to solve the equation 0 equals x minus 3 over x minus 2. How do I solve that equation? Bring this over here. And what happens? It stays zero. You're multiplying, so it stays zero. When you solve that, it looks like x equals three. So I plot the point three comma zero. Where did I put that point? The point three comma zero is where? on the x-axis, so that is your x-intercept. Hmm. Enough there? For you to draw it in? Yeah. Just like on the quiz, the test question will not be anything weird. It will be a normal picture.
That's the whole first page of the test. Anybody have a question about it? All right, there's only six questions left and the whole test is done. Look at the six questions. Two, A, B, C, D, E, F. Which one do we need to do first? A. A, all right. A is a lot like the quiz you just took. When I do an inequality, there are two things I have to have. One is a number line, and one is a zero. I don't have a zero. So what am I going to do first? Before I do anything else, what am I going to do? Subtract 6x. Now I have my zero. Now, what do you do next? Factor it. And we're not going to panic. We're going to look at it and say, oh, that's easy. We can take out an X. If I take out an X, where will the dots go on the number line? They'll be nice, solid dots. Where will they go? going to be 6 and 0. Kids, is there a number attached to that? Does it say plus something or minus something? No. So we put it at 0. Plain axis, go at 0. Now, this hasn't happened to us. Normally, I use 0 as my test point. I can't because it's a dot. So I don't know what other number do you want to use. One, we can use one. One's right here. If you put in a one, you would have positive times negative. If you put in a one, this would be positive, this would be negative. Does positive times negative give me greater than zero? No. no. So that's not shaded. This must be an, this must be? So we're less than or equal to zero or greater than or equal to six. Any question about that? B, C, D, E, F. What's next? B. B? B is another question that's just like on the cruise you just took. Whenever I do an inequality, two things. I've got to have a zero, and i got to have a number line. So if I'm going to get zero, I guess I better subtract six. It'd be six over one. And it's six over one. This is a fraction. I'm subtracting these two fractions. I do not want to have two fractions, I want to have one. So I can get a dot from the top and a dot from the bottom, of one fraction. So I'm going to have to put these two together, and the only way to put them together is to get a common denominator. So the common denominator is going to be x plus 3. So I will multiply this fraction, top and bottom, by x plus 3. So my denominator is x plus 3. Now they match. So I have x minus 2. Okay, be really careful here. What is this? Minus 6x minus 18. Uh, what is that? Minus 5x minus 20. Could you 
Um, Lindsay says, could I factor the top? This hasn't really happened to us before, but you absolutely could take a negative five out. It might help you to do that. If you did take it out, what would it leave you with? X plus four. Plus four. Be careful. If you're going to do that step, be careful. Now, it's real easy to see where the dot goes. We have two dots. Where do they go? Negative four and negative three. This makes me want to fill in the dots, doesn't it? But what's our rule? Fill them in, but not the denominator. So the denominator is this one, so I can fill in the negative four. I should fill in both but I can't ever fill in the denominator because it can't ever equal zero. Speaking of zero, can I use zero now as a test point? Yeah, zero is out here. So if I put zero in, okay now be careful, if I put zero in, will my top be positive or negative? Zero. If zero in, it's negative. And the bottom, if you put a zero in, is positive. Is negative over positive less than zero? Yes. So that works, which means that works, and our answer is less than or equal to negative four or greater than negative three. That's all that's left. C, D, E, F. Which one do you want to do? C. Uh-oh. Take a look at C. What does it have in it? Okay. So that means we are going to have to do more than one test point. We have a zero. It's beautifully factored. We're going to have two dots colored in. Uh-oh, how come I colored in both of those dots and didn't worry about it? No denominator. Where are the dots? <coughs> Negative four and one. All right now, here I go. There's a square. That means I'm gonna have to check, check, check. All right. Negative five. Negative five would make this a negative one, right? But you're squaring it, so it essentially is going to be positive. Negative five would make this negative. Now you're multiplying those. Does a positive times a negative give you less than zero? Yes. Less than zero means negative. Write that down if you need to. So this works. All right, now pick a number in here. Any number in here. Zero. Zero would make this positive and this negative. Does a positive times a negative make me negative? Yes. So that works. Pick a number out here. Two. Two would make this positive and this positive. Does a positive times a positive give me a negative? No. So two sections are shaded. Actually, can't I just say everything less than or equal to one? Isn't that what's shaded in? Jamal? Can you go over this negative and positive thing again? Like where these came from? Yeah. I have to pick a number in this part of the number line, like negative 5. Okay. If I put negative 5 into this parentheses and square it, 
it's going to be positive. <coughs> if I put negative 5 into this parentheses, it's going to be negative. When I multiply these two together, positive times negative, it would be negative, which is what I wanted, less than zero, so I colored that in. Does that work? Then I did the same thing here. Take the number in there, zero. Positive times negative. Okay, that works too, because that'll give me negative. Take the number out here, two. Positive, positive. That does not multiply together to give me a negative result. So that's not color. So if you put, if you put a number into it, see I put like a number into it, you have to plug it into both, does it work for both or? You, well, you, you plug your number into both parentheses and you're just determining if it's positive, if each parentheses is positive or negative. Then you're multiplying them together. All right, is everybody okay with that? All right, what's left, let's see. Um, let's do E. We can do that one, I think, in our remaining time. Then you'll just have two problems to do for homework. E, what is our strategy on problem E? How are we going to solve this? Notice, it's not an inequality. I don't need zero, and I don't need a number line. What do I need to do? I need to multiply by 15. I can use 50x or I can use 10x. Whichever you prefer. I'm going to use 10 because it's a smaller number, but 50 would work. 50 would work. What is this going to end up equaling? 5 goes into 10 twice. 18x. What does this end up equaling? You guys, 30. No x. The x's cancel. The 10's cancel and leave me with 7x. So 30 equals negative 11x. And x equals negative 30 11. Done. When you do the multiply, kids, I don't think I've made a good enough point of this. There are lots of things you can multiply by. The point is, whatever you pick to multiply by has to cancel the denominator. So 50 would cancel these out. You could use 50 if you wanted to. For tomorrow, don't forget, it's the last can food day. And you need to finish this practice test, which basically means problems D and F. We also will have a little quizzy food tomorrow. Make sure you have your calculator. No, 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 no. This is